Astrology in the Bible from edgarcasey.org Written by Kevin Williams Created and read by John Bott There shall be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. Jesus Christ, Luke, chapter 21, verse 25 The Bible is filled with references to astrology. This is because astrology was widely accepted as truth in biblical times. Christians who believe that astrology is satanic would be surprised to learn that the Bible is filled with astrology, and even Jesus himself made numerous references to astrology. People believed in the study of the stars in biblical times. Everyone knew the influence of the sun on the earth, and the sun was a star. It certainly made a pattern, so far as life on earth was concerned. It shaped everything or at least nourished everything, and the shape had to be such as to allow the sun to give life to it. One of the great astrological stories in the Bible is the story of the star of Bethlehem. It is written that the star was a sign from God signaling the birth of the Messiah into the world. The three magi, Persian astrologer kings, determined the time of this birth by the position of this star. In 1600, Johannes Kepler hypothesized that this star was actually a conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn. Confirmed by modern astrology, this symbolism ties in with the prophecies of that era concerning a messiah amongst the Jews. The conjunction occurred at the end of Pisces, ruled by Jupiter. Jupiter is the planet of kings. Saturn is the planet that rules the Jews, thereby giving the king of the Jews. This was a very infrequent triple conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn, and it occurred in the year 7 BC. The following are some of the most interesting biblical references to astrology. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether it was in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this person, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know. But God knows, was caught up to paradise. He heard inexpressible things, things that humans are not permitted to tell. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1-4 through 4. The phrase, I know a person, is a euphemism people used in those days to refer to themselves in a humble manner. Paul explained that he was taken to the third heaven. The phrase, third heaven, is a reference to the multi-level realms of the afterlife. This is an astrological, religious concept believed by Jews, Christians, Gnostic Christians, Platonists, and other people in those days. A correlation with Paul's third heaven can be found in the Gnostic book entitled The Apocalypse of Paul. The Apocalypse of Paul also describes Paul's afterlife visit to the third heaven. It also describes how Paul travels through a hierarchy of heavenly realms all the way to the tenth heaven. According to Flavius Josephus, the famed Jewish historian, the Jewish temple at Jerusalem had the twelve signs of the zodiac inlaid in its floor. Josephus also stated that the twelve loaves of showbread in the temple was a reference to the zodiac. In modern times, Israel issued stamps with the zodiac signs identified the twelve tribes of Israel and the astrological symbolism of the temple. The Bible states that God made the heavenly bodies to show us signs of his intentions. These signs can be read by anyone who knows how to interpret them. Astrology is about interpreting these signs in the motions of the sun, moon, planets, and stars. And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them serve as signs to mark seasons and days and years and let them be lights in the expanse of the sky to give light on the earth. And it was so. Genesis chapter 1 And there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of the nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud, with power and great glory. Luke chapter 21 In the verse above, Christ uses astrology to reveal the signs in the sky of his coming.
The Bible states that the first communication from God came from the stars. David writes in his psalm, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day after day utters his speech, and night after night shows his knowledge. There is no tongue or language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them, the heavens, he has set a tabernacle for the sun. Can you bring forth the Mazaroth, the zodiac, in their seasons, or lead out the bear with its cubs, an astrological constellation? Job, chapter 38, verse 32. This Bible verse shows God using astrology to answer Job. The Bible also describes an astrological sign called the morning star, which is a reference to the planet Venus. The morning star, also known as the light bringer, is also an astrological symbol that functions as a sign for the onset of dawn. It appears as a brilliant star at night just before the sun rises and brings light each morning to earth. The greatest function of this light bringer is as a symbolic reference to the Messiah, who brings the light of God to the people. The Bible also uses the term morning star as a reference to all sons of God, including Lucifer, the light bearer. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root of the offspring of David and the bright morning star. Revelations chapter 22 verse 16 and we have the word of the prophets made more certain, and you will do well to pay attention to it, as to a light shining in the dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 19 Just as I have received authority from my Father, I will also give him the morning star. Revelations chapter 2 verse 27 through 29 how you have fallen from heaven, O morning star, son of the dawn! You have been cast down to the earth, you who once laid low the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly, on the utmost heights of the sacred mountain. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. Isaiah chapter 14 verse 12 through 14 after this, Job opened his mouth and cursed the day of his birth. He said, May the day of my birth perish. May its morning star become dark. May it wait for daylight in vain and not see the first rays of dawn. For it did not shut the doors of the womb on me to hide trouble from my eyes. Job chapter 3 verse 1 through 10 Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? On what were its footings set? Or who laid its cornerstone? while the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy. Job chapter 38 verse 4 through 7 In one of the prophetic dreams of Joseph, he saw the sun, moon, and eleven stars bowing down to his star. The interpretation of this dream was obvious, and that was that Joseph's father, son, mother, moon, and eleven brothers, eleven stars, will bow down to him. Then he, Joseph, had another dream, and he told it to his brothers. Listen, he said, I had another dream, and this time the sun and moon and eleven stars were bowing down to me. When he told his father as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, What is this dream you had? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you? Genesis chapter 37 verse 9 through 11 Of course, we all know the rest of the story, that they indeed had to bow down to Joseph when Pharaoh made him a prince because of his ability to interpret dreams. Here is an excellent Bible passage that describes the astrological influences on humanity. There is a time for everything, and a season for every activity under heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to uproot. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to tear down, and a time to build. A time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones, and a time to gather them. A time to embrace, and a time to refrain. A time to search, and a time to give up. A time to keep, 
and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to mend, a time to be silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 through 8. Astrology refers to every 2,160 years as a new age, which is a different sign of the zodiac that comes into position to influence the earth. The Bible describes events that will occur according to the signs of the astrological ages. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Matthew chapter 28 verse 20 Anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or in the age to come. Matthew chapter 12 verse 32 The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. Matthew chapter 13, verse 39 through 40. What will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Matthew chapter 24, verse 3. No one who has left home or wife or brothers or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will fail to receive many times as much in this age and in the age to come eternal life. Luke chapter 18, verse 29 through 30. We do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age or the rulers of this age. None of the rulers of this age understood it. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6 through 8. These things happened to them as examples and were written down as warnings for us, on whom the fulfillment of the ages has come. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11. Christ was raised far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 21 It is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the coming age, and who have fallen away, be brought back to repentance. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 4 through 6 Just and true are your ways, King of the Ages. Revelations chapter 15, verse 3. All these Bible verses are referring to the end of the age of Pisces, the fish, the church age, and the beginning of the age of Aquarius, the water bearer, Christ. Jesus was born under the end of the age of Aries, the ram or lamb, and this may explain why he called himself the Lamb of God. By the time Jesus began his ministry, It was the beginning of the age of Pisces, the fish, the church age. The sign of the fish has special significance to Christianity, because the sign of the fish has been known throughout the millennia to be the sign of Christianity. Jesus recruited fishermen as disciples to make them fishers of men. He fed the masses with the miraculous draft of fishes. His followers were known in Latin as pisiculi, the little fishes. A commonly used icon in Christian churches is the Vesica Pisces, which is Latin for mouth of the fish. Its shape resembles a fish without a tail. It can be seen in the shape of stained glass windows in many churches and cathedrals. The Pope wears a ceremonial hat in the shape of a fish's head. Around the year 2300 AD, the end of the age of Pisces will occur. The world will then enter a new age, the age of Aquarius, the water bearer. It should be obvious to Christians that the identity of this water-bearer is the one who, number one, came from the waters of Galilee, number two, baptized with water, number three, changed water into wine, number four, walked on the water, number five, washed the feet of others with water, number six, calmed the ocean waters, number seven, gives living water, number eight, says we must be born of water, number nine, drank the cup from the Father. Sometime before the age of Aquarius arrives, major earth changes were foretold by Jesus and Edgar Cayce to occur. Jesus said that before this happens, there will be wonders in the sun, moon, and stars, signaling this coming age of the Christ consciousness. This is a good reason why every Christian should study astrology so that these heavenly signs can be interpreted. Another astrological reference concerning Christianity deals with the winter solstice, which begins on December 21st. It is the day of the year when the night is longest and the daytime shortest.
The ancient Egyptians noticed that on the autumn equinox, the sun does not set farther south and sets in the same place on the horizon for three days. This is an astrological reference to when the sun, sun, goes down for three days, dies, and then begins to rise again, resurrection. Using the crude instruments available, ancient astronomers were able to detect by December 25th of each year that the daytime had become noticeably longer. This date was chosen and remains the traditional date for followers of many different religions to celebrate the rebirth of the sun. Following the equinox, each succeeding day has slightly more sunlight than the previous day. It was seen as a promise that warmth would return once more to the earth. Numerous pre-Christian religions honor their god's birth or rebirth on or about that day. The ancient Egyptians knew that as long as the sun rose in the morning, life would continue on the earth. This explains why the Egyptians used the sun as their symbol for the eternal life of the cycle of the seasons. In many Christian churches today, the symbol of the cross with a circle in the center of it appears on church steeples. This icon of the circle as representing the sun comes from the Egyptian belief that the sun represents eternal life. The Egyptian religion held that the son of God, Horus, was killed under the sign of Virgo, the virgin, but was resurrected in the age of Leo, the lion. This is why the Egyptians built the Sphinx with the head of a woman, Virgo, and the body of a lion, Leo. During the days of Moses, the Hebrews were subject to the religion of Egypt. Before the worship of Amun-Ra, the major Egyptian deity, was instituted, Egyptians worshipped Isis, the mother of God. When the Hebrews left Egypt and arrived in Canaan, their religion was influenced by the Canaanite religion whose god was named El, the planet of Saturn. The Star of David is a symbol which comes from the Star of Saturn, El, which is the planet the ancients used to refer to the Hebrews. The Hebrews adopted Saturday from Saturn's day as their day of worship. Christians, whose astrological influence was the sun, also from Egyptian origin, worshipped on Sunday, or the sun's day. The story of Jonah, Semitic for a son, is about a man who is swallowed by a whale, death, and remains in its belly for three days, at which time the man is freed, resurrection. This story is another symbolic of the astrological account of how the sun remains still for three days during the winter equinox. It is also symbolic of the resurrection of Christ. When Moses came down from the mountain, he saw the people worshipping a golden calf. This idol came from the Egyptians' astrological worship of the sun. Golden represents the color of the sun. The calf, Taurus the bull, represents the age in which Moses lived when he wrote the Torah. When history moved into the next sign, Aries, the ram, the Hebrews celebrated the approach of their Messiah by blowing ram's horns. The sign of Aries influenced many religions to adopt the Lamb of God concept. The concept of the zodiac is very ancient, with roots in the early sighted cultures of Mesopotamia. Astrology is, more than likely, the oldest religion created by humans. The first twelve sign zodiacs were named after the gods of these cultures. The Greeks adopted astrology from the Babylonians, and the Romans, in turn, adopted astrology from the Greeks. These cultures renamed the signs of the Mesopotamian zodiac to symbolize their own mythologies. This is why the familiar zodiac of the contemporary West bears names out of Mediterranean mythology. The concept of reincarnation is a necessary tenet of astrology. The notion of reincarnation and karma together explain why some people are born into lucky circumstances and others into unfortunate conditions. For astrologers concerned with the question of why some people are born into a life of hardship, written large across their horoscopes, and other people seem to be born under a lucky star, reincarnation and karma prove important explanatory tools to understand divine justice. Reincarnation also provides a framework for explaining why a person has certain personality traits if they are carryovers from past lifetimes. End of Astrology in the Bible Written by Kevin Williams Created and read by John Bott The following is a quote from Jesus with regard to astrology in the Bible, found in Luke chapter 21 verse 25 There shall be signs in the sun, in the moon, and the stars.